Welcome to another episode of Reason Explained. Today we're going to work with the subtractor synth inside of Reason. And along the way, I want to show you guys how envelopes work and how you can use modulation, LFO, and filters to get more out of your synths and make them a lot more unique. So first things first with any synth is you're going to start off with the oscillators. You've got 32 different waveforms to choose from with subtractor. The one thing that really sets Subtractor apart is the fact that you can create new waveforms and unique waveforms, and that's what we're going to do today with this. So we've got two modes to choose from. Um, we've got the multiplied and the subtractive mode, and what I mean by that is we have this phase offset. So it takes a copy of the waveform phase, and you can subtract them from each other, or you can multiply them with each other, and that will give you um, a new type of waveform. So here's the subtractive version of this waveform. It's kind of a bell harmonic as we modulate the phase knob, and then the multiplied waveform is more of a metallic sound. So we'll take the octave down on this to octave 3, just so it's a little bit lower. Then let's enable oscillator 2. We'll do a subtractive one on this one, and let's just choose another numbered waveform as well. So we can adjust the mix between the two oscillators with the mix knob. And so we'll put all the way to the right to hear just oscillator 2. Let's take the octave down. And you can hear there's a nice sub bass in there. And now what we can do is we can mix these two oscillators together. And so we've done a good job of creating um, different waveforms just with the phase offset. But now what we're going to do is we're going to add some ring modulation to the second oscillator. And that's going to take the sum and the difference of the frequencies and it's going to add that to the sound and we're going to get just some more um, content basically in the noise. So it kind of adds a nice buzz to this. So the last thing we can do with these oscillators before we move to other areas is this FM knob. And FM is just frequency modulation. So in this case, oscillator 2 is the modulator, and it's going to modulate oscillator 1. So as we turn this up, we'll hear it's kind of more of a metallic sound again. So we can leave it there and go from there. So at this point, we can start moving into the filter section. And the one thing to note with the filters inside of Subtractor is you have two. And uh, filter one, you have your standard filters with uh, notch, high pass, band pass, and two types of low pass. Filter two is just a low pass filter. So again, this can open up some more unique sounds as you maybe use a band pass filter to allow certain bands to pass, and then use a low pass filter to filter some of the lower frequencies out of that band. So that's kind of one example we can use it for. So we'll put it in band pass mode. I'm going to put keyboard tracking all the way up so it tracks as I move up and down the board. Uh, keyboard tracking works mostly with the low pass filter, but in case we want to use a low pass filter later, we'll just go ahead and leave it on. So we'll mess with a little higher um, band rate or uh, band to pass there. So we'll leave filter two off for now. And at this point, we can start talking about how envelopes work. And we're going to use the amp envelope for this example. So the amp envelope is how the note reacts. Um, if you want it to be more of a plucked sound, you would have a low decay and a low sustain. The note's very quick and very abrupt. If you want it to have a, low, a long fade in, you'll put a high attack on. So that's kind of essentially how the amp envelope works or what the amp envelope is. But an envelope in general, if I reset these settings real quick, you have ADSR. So you have your attack, decay, sustain, and release. And I think the easiest way to show you guys how that works is to use this um, example that's in the uh, operations manual. So as you push the note down, the attack is the time it takes to reach its highest value. At that point, it's going to decay and fall down to your sustain level. And then once you release the note, that's your release section. So it's kind of the tail or the fade out of the sound. So if we go back to our synth now, we can kind of use some of that here. So let's put a longer attack on. So the note kind of fades in. And then we'll have a, dec a high decay as well. And then we'll have a um, fairly high sustain. And then we'll have a kind of a long release. Uh, not a long release, but a little longer release. So the note trails a little bit. So you can see how I let go and it kind of has that slow fade out there. So now that we've messed with the amp envelope, we can look at our filter envelope. 
So in our filter envelope, we have the same settings. We have attack, decay, sustain, and release. So first off, let's go ahead and turn our amount up to about the mid 30s or so. And what we're doing is we're telling the filter how to react. So it's not static and it's actually moving around in the mix. So with a longer attack, it's gonna cause that filter to open up more. And see, we move more towards those higher notes. And then again, let's go ahead and just bring our decay to about the mid 50s or so. And then sustain will be um, close to that as well. Actually, we're bringing it up a little higher. So the sustain is going to be a little bit longer. And then we'll put a real long release on this as well. Now, you'll notice how it kind of swings to the high end and it gets kind of unwanted sound. So if we invert this, now instead of the filter frequency swinging open to higher frequencies, it's going to swing down to lower frequencies. And so we get more of the bass content and we can still ignore those high end um, frequencies there. So now moving on to the modulation envelope, again, we're going to have the same settings, your ADSR settings. So let's boost our amount up to about 100 so we can hear it quite a lot. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to modulate the uh, phase. Now we're going to move these knobs to get those kind of bell and metallic harmonics kind of moving in the sound. So. You can hear it a little bit there, so if we bring our attack up, it'll swing those phase knobs quite a lot. And at this point, it's kind of to taste what you want. So we're going to do a quicker attack. And let's go ahead and do a, a high decay, as well as a, like a medium sustain, and then a quick release. So you can just hear how there's a little bit more movement in that, uh, those oscillators now. So at this point, uh, we can move on to our LFO sections and we can start to manipulate things even more and um, automate some things. So uh, first things first is we will sync it with our tempo. We'll leave it in the triangle wave. And in case you don't know what LFO is, it's low frequency oscillation. So it's just uh, sending this triangle wave to, uh, in this case, what we're going to send it to is the mix. So this mix knob. So it's going to modulate the mix knob and it's going to cause it to swing back and forth between these two oscillators, which will just, again, put some more um, variation in the sound. So let's go ahead and turn our amount up to about mid 70s or so. So we're hearing a decent amount of it. <laughs> And if we bring the rate down, we'll get a slower movement on that. All right, so the last thing I want to show you guys um, with this subtractor is we use the amp envelope and we adjusted how the note reacts when I play it. What we're going to do now is use LFO2 to modulate the amplitude. So again, it's not just static and always doing the same things on the notes. It's going to create some different kind of variation in the sound. So what we'll do with this is we'll take our rate up. Um, well, actually, one thing with the LFO2 is that there is no sync knob, so we have to kind of um, guess. So. We'll put it about mid 70s for both these. And by introducing the keyboard tracking, uh, what we're doing is it's I'm going to track as I move up the keyboard, which will just slightly change the way the LFO reacts. And we can adjust the delay so maybe the initial onset of the note it doesn't have that fluttering, but afterwards it does. And you can see how that kind of comes in like that. So at this point, um, some other things we could tweak if we wanted to. We have our velocity section, which is basically how hard or how soft I play the note, generally how hard I play the note. So if I wanted to put the, uh, say, subtract some of this amplitude envelope, so the harder that I strike the note, it comes in right away. Whereas if I put it on a, a positive, it would boost that amp when I hit it hard. But that's really something you're going to have to mess with on your own because I can't show you how hard I'm hitting this, the notes here. Um, but it's an uh, interesting way to, again, add more variation to your sound. The last thing you can do with your performance modifiers is you can adjust how the mod envelope or how the mod uh, wheel is going to affect certain parameters in here. So we can adjust some more of the phase offset or how much amount of the LFO we want to send or the resonance, uh, filter resonance or filter frequency. So again, mess with those on your own any way that you would like. 
As always, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, you can leave those in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe.